Hey everybody, this is Troy from Country Wood Products. Today, I'm out at the mill and I'm skinning a bark off a log here that was on the ground. I don't want any dirt getting in my blade. I'll try to get it cleaned off as much as I can awkward because of the angle it's sitting at but I'm gonna make wedges from my Alaskan sawmill I don't want to go out and spend six seven dollars a piece on plastic wedges when I have a mill and I can make them myself As long as this log has any good meat inside it yet. So, get all that off. This is a battle axe. Uh, Bison from Buggin' In gave me years ago on my main channel the do-it-yourself world and uh, I like it a lot it's very useful well, I'm gonna skin this off and get it ready all right I've got that skinned up and clamped on the mill there's quite a bow on the bottom side so I chose this flatter edge to start out and uh, Hopefully we'll find out if there's some good meat in there from a log that's been on the ground for two years. And if so, I'll get myself quite a few felling, splitting, sawing wedges um, for tree felling and for, uh, it also helps when splitting trees or logs and for the Alaskan mill, all of which I will be using them for. Here's a wedge I'm gonna pattern it after. You can see it's, definitely been used and it has served me well I like um, plastic or wood because if you hit it with a chainsaw you don't mess up your blade and as you can see I've nicked it a lot but uh, this is the last of my plastic ones and I've not found any price I'm, li I'm liking so I'm gonna make one I'm just gonna measure this and I like the dimensions I like how it worked for me so I'm gonna make a bunch of these so we have an inch thick, right about five and a half, I'm gonna go six long. It worked for me, tapered to a point, almost a point, a little bit rounded on the end. I don't know if that'll matter much, probably I won't want a, a, a total uh, sharp edge because that'll break, but I also don't want uh, too wide of an edge. And I'll figure that out as I go. Now, I'm not using this for anything else but firewood, so my first pass, I'm gonna come in a little bit thicker just to take a good bit of that round off. I, I just wanna get a mess of wedges, as many as I can get, so I've gotta get into the meat of this log. The first thing I always do Line it up, make sure I'm not going to hit those dogs.
that sweet smell. Now I have to analyze. The log has quite a curve inwards right here, an inward curve here, and a little bit of bow out here, and it swings back in here. It's a really bad piece, but it's what I had on hand that I could quickly grab without machines or equipment at the time. I can get six inches here, just, just six inches. But the way it waves, curves, I'm not sure. I might end up going with five inches, because this is a really wavy tree. Sure if we want to come down a tiny bit because we certainly can't get six inches this way. We're right into the, the bark that way. So I've got to analyze this and figure out what's the best way to make the next cut. I think I've got a plan. Double and triple check my dogs and my tightness and my wood. I've had them come off before and jam up a blade, and that is no fun. Shop and I cut two pieces of wood that are an inch thick. All right, I'm gonna put them like this on the bunks and up against the dogs and see if I can get that one inch lift on one end that I need. I'll show you my thoughts. my thought. I can't exactly get that in there how I want. I don't think it's going to hold. Oh, maybe it will. Oh yeah, that's spongy. Definitely bad material. important. I just went and cut uh, two more pieces at three quarter inch thickness because I was getting an inch and a half on that log on the back side and that's too high for me. Now looking right down the line straight on at the blade I've got it angled for one inch on the high side and just a tiny little bit of meat on the back end. Hopefully I can keep that cut all the way down and we'll have a wedge and we'll see you in a minute.
Now I essentially have a very long piece of oak with the same, pretty much the same dimensions as the wedge. It looks pretty good to me so far. Now when I'm done, I'll run these on the table saw and re-saw them to get my multiple wedges that I need out of this one long big piece. Now, the next cut is simple. Now I take my braces out. And I saw again. So I got four big chunks I'll cut into wedges and I got about a quarter inch by whatever, uh, six, and I got a two by six. I can't cut smaller than a one and a half height. So basically I made it one and a half. So I've got a one and a half by five and a half, which is essentially a two by six oak I can use for something else. I just figured I'd shave that down to something useful since it was left over and I can't go below. This is one and a quarter, so the best I can do is one and a half without hitting them. So anyway, I've got to figure a way to stack these to dry and prevent cracking. Now, my wife showed up and immediately showed me that with the grain, it's I'm pretty impressed with her uh, catch net instantaneously. With the grain of these, they'll be easier to break this way if you try to use them for felling. But for my Alaskan mill, which is what I really need them for right now, they're perfect because all I got to do is tap them in lightly and keep that. Um, when I'm cutting along, when I'm cutting a board, I've got to keep that from closing in on the chain and wedging it and uh, pinching off my chain while I'm sawing. So every once in a while I gotta come in and put a wedge here and there and these will be perfect for that. All right, now I'm gonna slab these out or saw these out I should say. Um, there's natural cracks in the wood so I'm gonna have to come in past the splits and cracks and cut that off discard the bad stuff and cut what I can here's a that won't affect anything there I'm going to cut all the way through and get anything that I can out of the four pieces and then I'll have a lifetime supply of of wedges I can't explain the smell, but oh, this log has been on the ground for two years, and so the sap in it has soured, and it's it's a beautiful, sweet smell. I love I love aging oak. Oh, so I'm probably gonna put a stopper on here. This is an old secondhand tool I got. I think I'm going to go to two and a half inches on these. And I've got to come up with a way to... I've got a bunch of these, so I'm probably going to put some kind of a stopper. I'm going to clamp a block on here. I'll be right back if I can get a clamp on in some way.
well, here's a few. Now, again, these are not felling wedges, although the better ones I will probably use as such. Um, the grain does go this way, so there can possibly be splitting in the future. But I'm going to leave these in the garage in the shade to dry slowly. Now, if they're in the sun, they're absolutely going to split and crack and disintegrate. But this will likely be a very perfect... Uh, felling wedge for me and that's just one board I've got three more to cut so I'll probably have a lifetime supply of sawing and felling wedges here now some of these don't have good meat oh that's a beautiful green in there uh, I, I love the beauty in inside wood green that's a beautiful green right there but anyway some of these have a little rot but that isn't gonna hurt a thing even for a felling wedge but especially for me to slip that in when I'm running the Alaskan mill and slip these in by hand and tap them in to keep the board from, the wood from pinching my chainsaw. So I think they're gonna be perfect. Let me finish sawing them up. Well, there's 56 wedges, tree felling, splitting, sawing wedges out of just a little bit of work on a sawmill, a little bit of work in a shop. Now, considering wedges are a consumable item out in the field, you know, if you're felling trees, you're going to nick and tear up and slash and cut and destroy and demolish and lose your wedges. And considering the plastic ones I've been shopping around for a while that's why I decided to make these the plastic ones are anywhere between five and seven dollars a piece that I've been finding online even if we say five dollars a piece right the plastic ones and I'm comparing to my savings um, I've got over two hundred and fifty dollars worth of wedges here I mean that is absolutely an insane value and savings for my time so you know if they split break get lost whatever I'm not losing money this time I'm just losing something was destined to be firewood in the first place that is very satisfying I'm gonna space these out a little bit of air space in between each one and leave them out on a shelf for a while and just leave them there in the garage out of the Sun out of the wind and they'll slowly air dry and they probably they likely won't um, split or warp on me in under those conditions since they're so small I highly doubt they're going to really bow or anything there's not a lot here and if they did bow a little bit it won't affect their performance at all they'll still drop a tree I'm happy please like this video where's my thumb I'm looking upside down please do like this video whichever way it is. Subscribe if you haven't. Stay tuned for some more cool videos to come. This is Troy from Country Wood Products. Talk to you later.